I was articulated yesterday by a couple of my friends that our country was not founded on Christian principles. Our country was founded on common law uh, because the Declaration only refers to God four times in the Constitution. It doesn't refer to God at all. And it only articulates the structure of government. Remember that we were a collection of states and colonies, and you need to read the state constitutions before anything else. Nine out of 13 of the original states required you to be a Bible-believing Christian to serve in government at the time of the founding. You could, you, even in Pennsylvania, actually, 13 out of 13 required a declaration of faith. Nine out of 13 required you to be a Protestant, except Maryland, which was Catholic, which still required a declaration of faith. In almost every single one of the original state constitutions, Pennsylvania included, they had, I profess Lord and Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior in the original state constitutions. So you remember, we're a collection of states before that. Secondly, 55 out of 56 of the original signers of the declaration were Bible-believing church-attending Christians. You asked about common law. So common law is inherited from Blackstone, who was Christian. It, a common law is an outgrowth of the scriptures. So let's go to three principles of common law. Presumption of innocence, due process, and jury of your peers. All three are biblical principles. So, and all wrapped into the ultimate biblical principle that you shall not favor justice if you are rich or poor, which is in Leviticus 19, right before the most famous part of Leviticus 19, which is that you should love your neighbors yourself. But before that is that in the administration of justice, you shall not favor the rich or the poor, which is the idea of blind justice. We get that in the West, which is incorporated also in the New Testament ideal, neither slave nor Greek nor Jew. You're all one in Jesus Christ, which is we get the idea of human equality. These are all biblical ideas. They're not enlightenment ideas, which is they kind of get conflated at the time. But more importantly than that, they say that God was only mentioned four times in the Declaration of Independence. Well, that's a big deal. Okay. Laws of nature and nature's God. The last paragraph of the Declaration reads as a prayer. It says, we appeal to the supreme judge of the universe. Who's the judge of the universe? Jesus Christ, as it says in Revelation, that Jesus will judge the earth on his throne. This, so in the declaration, they were praying to Christ our Lord as a prayer very specifically. Thirdly, as I said on stage yesterday, Deuteronomy was by far the most quoted book, religious or non-religious, in the time of the founding when they were putting together the Constitution, more than John Locke, more than Montesquieu, more than Blackstone. So the book of Deuteronomy which talked about laws, customs, traditions. It was Moses' farewell address as he's you know, about to say goodbye, say, hey, good luck in Canaan, guys. Here's how you should set up your form of government. But finally, and most importantly, let's look at actually what the founders said. John Adams famously said the Constitution was only written for a moral and religious people. It was wholly inadequate for the people of any other. The body politic of America was so Christian and was so Protestant that our form and structure of government was built for the people that believed in Christ our Lord. One of the reasons we're living through a constitutional crisis is that we no longer have a Christian nation, but we have a Christian form of government, and they're incompatible. So you cannot have liberty if you do not have a Christian population. So that, that's, just, that's just a surface-level belief. So then they'll go to the First Amendment, which is, has two, two parts of the First Amendment which get conflated. First of all, separation of church and state is not in the U.S. Constitution. That is a single letter that Thomas Jefferson wrote in 1807 to the Danbury Baptist Convention in Massachusetts, assuring them that the government would not come after the church, okay, which is the opposite of what they would say. However, that was then resurrected by the Warren Court and the Burger Court in the 60s, where they said, hey, you know, all of a sudden, we're now going to make this as if it's the Constitution. It does say in the Constitution two things, which is the Establishment Clause and the Free, free Expression Clause. The Establishment Clause is that Congress shall make no law prohibiting the free exercise thereof. What they were most worried about was a Presbyterian or a Anglican or a Quaker type religion taking over the federal government. Instead, it was that there is not going to be a state-run religion or a state-run government. Did you know that one of the first acts of Congress was taxpayer-funded Bible printing and distribution? Did you know that there were church services held in the Supreme Court building as late as the Jackson presidency in the 1820s? But going back to this idea of separation of church and state, and again, I could riff on this at ad nauseum because it's just so ridiculous, right? Is that it's not biblical because First, it's, it's not biblical. It's not constitutional because you go a layer deeper. People that even say that, do you believe in separation of morality and state? Nobody does. So all laws are a reflection of morality and all morality comes from somewhere. There is no such thing as neutral morality. And we believe what the founders believed because they put it in the halls of Congress, they put it in the Supreme Court, and they put it all throughout the country, which is that the Decalogue, the Ten Commandments, is the core morality of how a society and a civilization should exist, right? The, the Ten Commandments of every person. And finally, and this is the kicker, if the founding fathers were not Bible-believing church-trained uh, church Christians, why did they put Leviticus on the Liberty Bell? 
Not John, not Psalms, not Proverbs, not Genesis. Leviticus. Most Americans can't spell Leviticus. <laughs> Leviticus 2519, proclaim liberty throughout the land of which you are in. It is one of the most sinister, most unsubstantiated lies that does not come up against any sort of academic scrutiny. This idea that founding fathers were a bunch of enlightenment, common law, deists. The reason they hate it is because if they, the reason they must say this is that if we actually go back to our Christian roots and we go back to where we once were, it's America's best hope for revival and for a great future.